Before we calculate our confidence interval, we have to check conditions. The first condition is the linear condition. If we look at the original scatter plot, we see a strong linear relationship between altitude and call duration. So that's a good thing. Also in our residual plot, we don't see any obvious patterns. So it seems like a linear model is appropriate. So the linear condition is met. For the independence condition, we must assume that each of these observations were independent of the others. For the normal condition, we have to check that the residuals are approximately normally distributed. And we have a histogram of the residuals. The histogram's unimodal and roughly symmetric, so I think it's safe to say the residuals might be normally distributed. The next condition is the equal variance condition. We have to look at the residual plot and we should see random scatter throughout all the altitudes. And that's what I see. There's no obvious patterns here. So we'll say the residual plot shows random scatter and no fanning. Fanning is when the residuals build from small to large or from large to small. And we don't see that here. We see equal variance throughout the altitudes. The last condition is the random condition. We must assume these observations represent a random sample of all Koki frog calls. Now all confidence intervals are a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error, which is the product of the critical value in the standard error. Since we're trying to estimate the slope, our point estimate can be found right here. It's the coefficient of altitude in our computer output. We also have the standard error right next to it. Now one mistake a lot of students make is they think that this t right here is our t star, our critical value. It's not. This is the t associated with the significance test for if a slope exists. We have to calculate our t star using inverse t. Now from our computer output, we know we have 19 degrees freedom. So our sample size must have been 21, and then we subtract 2 from it to get our 19 degrees freedom. So let's draw a t distribution with 19 degrees freedom. Since we're building a 95% confidence interval, let's isolate the middle 95% of our distribution. That means in each of these tails, we have 2.5%. Now we can use inverse t to look up this value right here, which is t star. To do this, we're going to tell our calculator to give us the t cutoff value that isolates the lower point 975 of the distribution, which is the middle 95% and that tail area of 2.5%. We also have to tell it the degrees freedom. To do this, press second vars. This is our distribution menu, and we're gonna go down to inverse T. We're gonna type 0.975 for area, and for degrees freedom, we'll put 19. All right, there's our T star, about 2.093. Now let's build our confidence interval. All right, here's our confidence interval. Always round the lower limit of the confidence interval down and the upper limit up. Let's interpret this interval. We are 95% confident that the slope of the true least squares regression equation that describes the relationship between altitude and call duration of the Cokie frog is between 0.1347 and 0.2073. Check out the second part of this video by clicking the link on the left, or click the link on the right for a playlist of least squares regression inference.